Hi, this is Kevin from 3D Printed Props. You can hear the 3D printer going in the background. What we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at all the Adafruit components that are going to be going into the Infinity Orb, and not only how it was put together, how it was wired, but how it was coded, because that is the most important part. <laughs> This was a lot more complicated than I had planned. Uh, I'm used to just sort of wiring up, you know, LEDs with switches and whatnot and some batteries. But again, as you can look at it, there's a lot going on here. This is a trinket. Uh, it's from Adafruit. And again, uh, all the pieces and parts will be in the show notes. Uh, I'm also going to add the code to the show notes that powers all of this. So this trinket is programmable. There's a mini USB right here. You plug a USB in into the computer and you can program and we'll look at that later on in the video. We then have a NeoPixel. This is a NeoPixel jewel from Adafruit and it can be white or rainbow. All these little squares can do multiple different colors. This is a Lipo, um, or Lipo backpack and what this allows us to do is plug this battery in and when it is plugged in, the trinket is plugged in, it will charge the battery okay and if you remember correctly that's what we plan on doing with the the infinity orb you will be able to plug the infinity orb in and it will charge the battery and it's going to charge it through there so the switch itself is connected to the ground and to the zero pin the Adafruit NeoPixel is going from the uh, one pin to the input one pin here so that when we push the button here, the light will go on and off. Now, let's take a look at the, um, the drawing I made uh, from using Adafruit's graphics to show you exactly how this thing is wired. And then after that, we'll take a look at how the code works. Now, I'm not a code expert, so I can show you how I sort of put it together with a lot of help from people at Adafruit and over at the uh, Fast LED uh, message boards. So thank you for that, guys. But uh, first off, let's take a look at the drawing diagram. Okay, so I know it's probably difficult to see from the video how things were wired, so I wanted to put together this little diagram. So, of course, what we've got there is the trinket and the uh, backpack, the Lip Lipo backpack, and then in the bottom uh, left-hand corner is the back of the NeoPixel, and then sort of in the middle there is the switch. So you can see how that it's wired up. You can pause this if you want to wire your own up or print it out. But, you know, you pretty much have to go from the, the battery to the battery on the LiPo. You've got to connect the 5 volts up from the uh, backpack and the trinket. And then, of course, that same 5 volt has to go to the 5 volt in the uh, NeoPixel. Then, of course, you've got to put your, uh, in the number 2 pin on the trinket, it has to go over to the input on the NeoPixel. And then that's pretty much, you know, the basic wiring. Of course, you've got to put your grounds in. You've got to go ground to ground to ground from the battery to the uh, trinket to the NeoPixel. Now, the switch is, uh, that's a little tricky. Not tricky, but you put it on the green wire there, or the green line I've got. It goes to pin zero. So this way you can use the program to actually... This is where we're telling the program, saying the switch is on pin zero. So that goes on pin zero. Now, if you put it on pin one, you would just change your code to pin one. Then the other um, contact and the switch has to connect to all the other grounds. So this way it's, you know, it's off and it's on. This is what's going to be turning it off and on. Now, if you connect all of this stuff together and you do not use the code or some type of code, you know, you don't have to use the code that I'm supplying. Uh, you can work on your own code that will make this button turn the NeoPixels on and off. But either way, you have to have some type of Arduino programming to make this NeoPixel go on. Again, if you click on in the show notes, there's a, a link to GitHub where you can find the actual code that I used and uh, to make it um, make that work. But there is a uh, diagram on how I wired it up. Uh, so it's a little easier for you to see. Okay, so this is the code that powers the LEDs and the and the trinket, the whole nine yards. This is what controls that. Without this code, that button does nothing. Um, the thing does not light up. You need the code for this to work. So this code is actually from a library from um, some programmers called Fast LED, 
and the links to this are in the show notes so you can download them because what you'll need to do is you'll need to a download arduino and that's the programming language programming the compiler this program that we're looking at right here uh, and it's up to uh, Arduino uh, 1.8.3. And again, all the links will be this in the show notes. You download that, you install it. You then go and search for these libraries. Again, the no they'll be in the show notes. I had to dig for them. But you uh, can just click down in the show notes. And you will load these, um, these libraries. And there's some instructions to do that. It's not difficult, but it takes a little bit of time to, to download them and then import them in. Uh, but again, the instructions will be down there. So this is... One, uh, code that they created and then I uh, uh, you know adapted to do what I needed it to do so if we look here some of the things that you'll need to change in the code are in these define areas so the LED pin is what pin on the trinket the um, the NeoPixel or any other type of pixel or uh, LED you are using is attached to and as you can see Ours is on pin 2. You then usually need to change the number of leads. This is a NeoPixel Jewel. It has 7 uh, LEDs. So uh, change to 7. I'm sorry, I said number of leads, number of LEDs. Uh, there's 7, so it goes there. Now some of these things you can play with, like frame rate per second. That has to do with how fast this, this flickers. And you can play with these. Okay. Now this one right here is important. This is the button pin. This tells the trinket that the button is on pin 0. And we can see there it's on pin 0. Now, when you see these two lines, if you're not familiar with programming, those are, um, they uh, make it so that this isn't code anymore. This is just, um, what am I talking about? They're descriptions. I'm blanking on the word, but uh, it's notes that you can add to your code. And, you know, a lot of the stuff I didn't fool around with, right, because it's, uh, I'm just beginning to understand the language. This is something that needed to be added to the base uh, fast LED code. The base LED code that I used for this is their examples fast LED fire 2012 with palette. So this is the fire 20 uh, fire 2012 with palette that I then adapted. Okay, so that's what you'll do. You'll pull up the base one and you'll end up you would end up changing this now again if you just click on the link below to this code you can just simply download the code for yourself if you want to use it but uh, that's the base one that i used so i had to add this and this uh, again this came from somebody over on the fast led google plus group and without this i could not get this thing to work so i want to thank that group a lot so what this does is this sets the brightness at 255 which is like the brightest I could I think you can get this is another bit of code that was added that sets the brightness and with this it keeps checking it okay then nothing was changed and then as we come down here this was added and this is the stuff that has to do with the button pretty much right here so it says you know if the digital read on the pin button is low uh, then it's off if it's up it's on okay so again if you don't want to worry about learning programming again I'm working on learning this Arduino programming code uh, but I know it enough now just to be dangerous to adapt other people's code and then all this stuff I didn't change any of this okay because it already was doing it why change it here's the thing I did have to change now this is this palette itself is called uh, lava and see if I can find that. I'm going to do a find lava. There it is right there. I was right on it. <laughs> this is called lava. Okay. Now the lava palette. Now lava palette was reds and oranges and and um, that's it. Reds and oranges and yellows. So it was like like lava. So I needed it to be purple. So what I did notice is that someplace in here it was calling to another piece of code so what I did was I went to the Arduino library and that's in your um, your documents area and I went to fast LED and I looked for the file that it called so then I looked for the color palette the the file it was calling to 
and I opened it up with a simple text app. And there it is. Okay, so in the in their their code, it calls to this file, color palette CPP. I then looked for lava, which is right here. And I changed all of these from, you know, uh, reds and oranges and yellows to purples, maroons, and dark blues. Now when it calls to this, it will go ahead and create, uh, it will just show these colors. So it did have to tweak it a little bit. Now, I did save this file so I could use it again in case uh, I wanted the normal lava. But then again, you can always just change it because you're pulling colors from down here uh, that they've that they've um, they've set values to. Okay, so that was it. After I changed the color palette CPP file to different colors of purple, now the Adafruit. Uh, NeoPixel lights up in that color. Now, again, when you're ready to actually load the code into the uh, trinket itself, you push on the reset button, the light will blink, and then you'll click on this upload button. And then you will get uh, some stuff down here, and it'll say connected and uploaded. And then once it's uploaded, the code will run. So that is the uh, actual code. Again, I put it over on GitHub and the link is below. Uh, you could then tweak the colors if you want or you can at least see how this switch works and then you can go ahead and use the switch in one of your own uh, pieces of code. Now, again, remember, I've got it set up so that when the button is pressed, it's off. So you will have to flip these right here. You will flip the low uh, or you will flip these. The, the the states because what I'm doing is I'm not turning the the LED on and off basically I'm just turning the um, brightness up and down so you would just flip these two and you'd say oh when it's uh, up it's or you know when it's down it's 255 when it's up or off it's um, zero so that's it that is the code to the whole thing Okay, so that we've taken a look at all that, let's look what happens when we plug it in. So we plug the battery in to the LiPo. And how we have the code set up, of course, the light goes on right when we turn it on. Let me turn this light off. Give us a little bit of a darkness there. So now the switch is up, so the light is on. And again, that programming is what made these colors, okay? So the purples and the reds and the blues, that's from the program. Now, when I push the button down, the light goes off. And when I let go of the button, the light goes on. Again, that has to work that way. So when we take the infinity orb apart, that the light comes on. And when we close it, the light goes off. So again, now I can finish the infinity orb, but I really wanted to show you what went into this because it I, I couldn't find something like this on the web fairly easy uh, i looked on youtube i looked on message boards you know every project's different right and every program is different but i think this is a really uh powerful uh drawing to have and code to have because with it you can really do a lot of things with these parts so i hope this video was helpful i hope you uh learned how you can use Adafruit's uh, stuff. Again, they're not like a sponsor or anything. I just dig their stuff. But how you can use their stuff to do a lot of different things. It's, it's really, really powerful stuff. Well, thanks for watching the video. This has been, this has been a great learning experience. Um, wiring that, uh, that trinket and the, the NeoPixels, and especially the coding. I want to learn that language a little bit more. Again, big shout out and thanks to the Adafruit forums. Uh, the admin who helped me over there, and the user who helped me over at the Fast LED Google group. I could not have gotten that code without them. They helped me so much. And if you're interested in building something like this, in the show notes, I've got the links to all the electronics. I've got the link to the code. And, of course, this video showed you how to put it all together. So, again, if you uh, liked the video, uh, please hit like and subscribe. This weekend I'll be putting the Infinity Orb together. I cannot wait. All right, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and look for that video this weekend.